Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Kahala Yamla, Yahawa, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Chakwadash. Peace and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the hope of the elect. I want to go into this lesson, which is a, a continuation of the last lesson that I posted on the channel uh, from Deuteronomy 23, dealing with uh, Dashanadabor and Edomite. Okay. And um, we're going to go right into it. All right. Deuteronomy 23 and 7. Okay. That's the controversial verse. And I, in my research through the Spirit of the Lord, I came across this website. Um, and, and it basically ended up confirming. All right. What, uh, you know, basically reaff reaffirming what um what we went into in the last lesson about um second Kings sixteen and six showing you that there's other times in the scriptures where Syrian or Aram Aramian is confused with Edom. <clears throat> but we're gonna read some of this. I'm gonna just breeze through it and it should be short, sweet to the point. Lord's will once again it is edifying. All right. This is from Israelelect.com which is spiritual, you know, or Israelect, Israelect.com. I actually like the ring of that. Hey, who knows? This guy, Willie Martin, this pastor, he could be a Jake. I'm not, I'm not sure. I got to do more research on his church, but the points he brought out about this was on point. So it says here, Deuteronomy 23 and 7, have you ever wondered about this verse and its seemingly contradiction to what the rest of the scriptures say about Edom? See, well, many of us, have and we present the following from Pastor Clifton A. Emaheiser, and he's located in Ohio. You know, I don't got to go into all the details, but uh, as I promised you in my last teaching letter, number 22, I'm going to clear up and, and document the problem with Deuteronomy 23 and 7. As I told you before, there are approximately 27,000 transnational errors in our present Bibles. Some various translations by various translators have attempted to clean up many of these discrepancies. But the errors are very are very numerous and overwhelming. The translation of Deuteronomy 23 and 7 is one of them. I will start by quoting this passage. And this is why the Holy Spirit is necessary to navigate the scriptures. Now, whether there is 27,000 transnational errors, um, that I will have to look into further. But, you know, there we acknowledge that there are translational errors. Uh, you know, they, that's why we have to go on. There's translational issues with certain scriptures like this one, for example. And that's why we go into the original tongues and we search things out. And ultimately, the spirit guides us to discern these things. OK. And this is no different. So it says some various translations by various translators have attempted to clean up many of these discrepancies. But the errors are very numerous and overwhelming. The translation of Deuteronomy 23 and 7 is one of them. I will start by quoting this passage. Thou should not have born Edomite. He is thy brother, thou shalt not have born an Egyptian, because thou was a stranger in his land. From this verse, it would appear that we should welcome all Edomites into our congregations with open arms and with no questions asked, and that we are somehow guilty of some dire contemptible sin for even thinking an evil thought against them. <laughs> you see? And, and that's what they try to get at. That's what Vocab Malone be using to say, look, see, in the law, thou shalt not have born an Edomite. You know, grasping at straws, man. And then the sad part about you guys is the one got you moment that you have ends up being more exposure on you because then we go get down to the bottom of it. What is the real truth? And the spirit searches out all things. So let's read on. It says. I ask you, is this not the impression which seized upon you when you read this passage for the first time? Remember the guilty, dirty, condemning feeling overcame you for even giving the Edomites the slightest hint of disparaging thought. Now us, we have the Rakhak Wadash, so we had the right proper understanding. When we came across the scripture, it was broken down to us properly. All right. And for brothers that may have had some confusion after watching videos like this, they Lord's will you the confusion will be cleared up. But that's why the Holy Spirit, the Rakhak Wadash is necessary. All right, it's 100 percent necessary to break down these scriptures. Without it, we don't have the truth, and it came from our our Lord Yahweh Shai, His sacrifice. All right, which is the will of the Heavenly Father. Okay, 
So it said that possibly uh, he said Yahweh, his true name is Yahweh. All right. Might suddenly kill you in your very tracks for even blinking an eye. If this has been your reaction when reading this passage in the past, forget it. But that is not what this verse is saying, not even remotely. All right. This is where it gets good. And the spirit led me to this because I had found that in Second Kings 16 and 6. And then when I read this, as I was reading along, it ended up confirming what I had uh, gone into in the last lesson. All right. So the Lord will give you signs to show you you're in the right direction. All right. It says. Um, if this has been your reaction regard reading this passage in the past, forget it for that's not what this verse is saying, not even remotely. OK, I it hap I happened upon this verse many years ago when I was listening to a presentation by an identity speaker who was making reference to the Edomites by using this verse as one of his points. At the time, I decided to look into the Hebrew meaning of the word Edomite for myself. I found a strong, exhaustive concordance of the Bible assign the term Edomite, the Hebrew word 130, which says Adomi, 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 patronymic, an Edomite or descendant from Edom, Edomite, see number 726, which had the following to say, Arawam, see, why does it say C number 726, Arawam, a clerical error for 130, an Edomite, as in the margin Syrian, see? At once the truth struck me, and this was about 15 years ago, for if the proper rendering was Syrian instead of Edomite, it would make all the difference in the world. Now, why do they leave it like that? <laughs> why do they leave it as thou should not have born Edomite? Well, that's obvious. Because they want to try to save the devil. You know, whoever is in control, which we know is Esau. He, he's control, in control of what translations are out there and so on and so forth. But they put it in. You have to actually look to find that it's a clerical error. Okay? And it's going to break down how it's a clerical error. So let's read. It would make all the difference in the world. Over the years since that time, I've pointed this clerical error out to many people of our persuasion at, this time, at the time. I knew this made more sense if Deuteronomy 23 and 7 were to correctly read Syrian rather than Edomite, for the Syrians were Abraham's relatives, in which case this verse would read, Thou shalt not abhor a Syrian, you see, for he is thy brother. That's what it's talking about. Okay? Because through Abraham, we are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, but they are also descend from Abraham. So they are, in a sense, all right, we know our only real family is the elect and Israel. But the law is saying to not harbor hatred, deep hatred for a rum. Okay. That's what it's saying, but it ain't talking about Esau. All right. It says, for he is thy brother that I should not have born an Egyptian because thou was a stranger in his land. Over the years, I have been satisfied that the word should have been Syrian instead of Edomite. I remember one party who challenged me indicating that it was only a clerical error and really didn't mean anything i finally came to the conclusion that it would be hard to it would be a hard proposition to prove and decide not to push the point openly any further that is however until recently when i was preparing for this lesson i accidentally discovered that the clerical error or what the clerical error was and this is this is this is where we got to pay attention i would now reveal to you how i made this discovery as i had decided to take up the topic of esau i was in the process of reading Anything and everything I could find on the subject, I was reading along in the Interpreter's Dictionary of the Bible, volume E through J, page 24, under the subtitle Edom, when I read this. There are places where, because of the similarity between the letters D and R, which is the Da and the Ra, the text ha has wrongly read Aram and Aramians for Edom and Edomites, such as 2 Kings 16 and 6. See, now when I when I did this, I was when I saw this, I was rejoicing because that's the confirmation of what I had noticed. You see, where it says 2 Chronicles 20 and 2, and that's another one that I didn't know about, where the KJV has followed the MT, but the RSV has followed an amended text. See, so in certain translations, they saw the error and they actually changed it. All right. Note: I have followed the Hebrew characters as faithfully as I know how to do on my computer. I may have made a mistake. The main thing to notice here is the similarity between the letters D 
D and R, and they are similar. All right, it's the um, the die, I believe, is a sharp uh, edge. All right, it's a line going up and then a line to the left. Okay, and that's the da. But the ra has like a little curve to it, if I'm not mistaken. And that could be easily misinterpreted. You know, if you're kind of reading fast, you might not notice that. And that's what happened. You can see very readily that a very small slip of the pen can change the word from Edomite to Samian or Syrian to Edomite. I will enlarge these two Hebrew letters and place them side by side so you can observe the difference in them. Now, we could actually go into the blue letter. Let's see. Hey, bear me one second, Baba Kasha. Hey, Shalom. So I have this in the KJV. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do is put the parallel with the NLT once again. Even though I think it still says Edomite in the NLT. And you might say, well, you already covered this. Well, we're covering it again. You know, that's the spirit. But it says, just to show you, okay, when you look at the Hebrew letters, we're going to go to Edomite, and we're going to show you, see the da, it's the, for reading from right to left, it's the ah, the da, the ma, and the ya. Now, that's not even how Edom is spelt. So that alone shows you that it's, it was an error, because Edom is Adawam, not Adam. Adam is... um is adam okay now when you go down here what does it say syria <laughs> slide that in there real quick a matter of fact i can't highlight things all right cool yeah so as you can see the da is like that and if i go to another word with a ra you can see uh, is there any in this passage let me see, let me see, let me see. yeah this one for example this one has a ra the third character from the right there, okay, that is the Ra right there. Yep, see, and it is actually curved. So it's a very similar character. So what happened was it was mistaken for the Da, you know, and that's what happened. That's why it said, and, and, and that doesn't even, that's not even... The correct spelling of Edom. Adawam. Adawam. All right. So now. So I can bear me one second. So now going back. It says. Uh, okay. Note. I have followed. The Hebrew characters as faithfully as I know. To. To know how to do on my computer, I may have made a mistake. The main thing to notice here is the similarity between the letters D and R. You see, that's what we just went into. This very small change in the Hebrew writing and the word can be changed from Syrian to Edomite. Think of it the way Syrian or Edomite. By this above slight change, the Hebrew R sound is changed to a D sound. Since I originally wrote this, I now realize that the small remnant of Judah from Jerusalem who went into Babylon in captivity spoke Hebrew when they went in and spoke Chaldee when they came out 70 years later. Also, when they went in, they were using a rounded style of Hebrew to write in. And when they came out, they were using a square style of Hebrew. Right. Is it possible that changing from a rounded style to a square style produced such an error? Well, if it did, how many other mistakes are there because of this? After all, it is absurd to believe we should not abhor an Edomite. When the Almighty hates them Himself, right? And that's that's really the point. Pick the meat from the bones, um, because you know I'm not saying everything this guy is saying is right, but when it comes to this verse, he's on point. All right, because he said, and it, he, this this is a scripture. All right, and I hated Esau and laid his mountains and heritage. This is Malachi one and three and verse four. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. 
So what sense does that make? That the Lord could hate Esau, Edom, but we can't. Aren't we not supposed to hate the things that the Lord hates? <laughs> you know? But they're so desperate because this doctrine from Yahabash and Yahshua is cutting them so bad that they'll pull at anything. Psalms 139 and 20. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Yep. They, they, they say that his name doesn't matter. Uh, Nate, mocked the, Nate actually mocked the name. These devils try to replace the name with a false name. So, hey, these men speak against the Lord wickedly. Okay. Do not I hate them, O Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, that hate thee? And those that hate the Lord, you don't think the Lord hates them back? So, if this is a part of the scriptures, it says hate them that hate the Lord. And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? And don't tell us that only King David can feel like this. Because this is the Psalm of David. That's what a Christian loves to say. Well, that's David. That ain't you, nigga. Well, wait a minute. Aren't we striving to be at the house of David? But then the deeper we go, the more they're going to go off. Emotional goddamn Christians. That's why I can't wait for the Lord to bring these judgments, man. I can't wait because it's going to just show... They're just going to have to swallow their pride and, and realize that this has been the truth the whole time. And all the praise and honor and glory goes to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. We're just blessed to, to have this truth and to be the vessels that the Lord choose, uh, Lord's will to the from the foundation to bring this out. From the foundation of the earth all the way up until the end of this wicked kingdom. All right. But when that time comes, you're not all these little petty arguments is going to be a wrap. And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? All right. I hate them with perfect hatred. What you Christians know about perfect hatred? The, you, you talk about we can't even hate. Now, nah, we going deeper than that. What about perfect hatred? I count them mine enemies. Matter of fact, let's get that in the NLT. Sometimes the NLT are hit even harder. These other translations are hit even harder than the KJV. I got it on airplane. Hold on. Real quick. Yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> Look at this. NLT. Psalms 139, 21. Oh, Lord, shouldn't I hate those who hate you? Shouldn't I despise those who oppose you? And that's what the nation of Edom has done. All right. Going back thousands of years, man. Yes, I hate them with total hatred. Woo! Total hatred. For your enemies are my enemies. Is the Lord with this? Of course. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in the scriptures. Okay. And let's read these last two. Search me, O Yahweh, Bashim Yahshai, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Yeah, because we deal with up and down the thoughts, you know, so we desire the Lord to search us and to purify us of our iniquities and of and of our um of our faults, of our imperfections. Okay, point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Yep. Point out anything in me that offends you. And this is what this is what elders and brothers are for. And it comes down harsh sometimes, but it needs to be. You know, we know how, how hard-headed Israel can be. We can all be like that at times because of the flesh. You know, we ain't immune. Israel as a whole is hard-headed. That's why the Lord had to set up some real austere men through his spirit. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem, Yashah, some austere men had to be set up to set us straight, man. Because I, I know for damn sure I was hard-headed as shit. You know, and, 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 and even now, sometimes we can still be, fall, you know, fall into that being hard headed category. But we try to limit it as much as we do our best to limit that. We could all be simple at times, though. You know, that's why I point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Beautiful. All right. Now, going back to the article. It says, and Edom saith, this is Numbers 20 and 18 through 21. And Edom said unto him, thou shalt not pass by me, lest I come out against thee with the sword. And he, this Edom, said, thou shalt not go through 
And Edom came out against him with much people and with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through his border. Wherefore Israel turned away from him. See, Esau's always been giving us trouble, man. And now they want to act like they've just been our friends the whole time and save everybody. Get the fuck out of here, man. All right? And then it goes into some history on... Um, All right, it goes into some some uh, solid history about the Edomites. Okay, which a hey, Lord's will, I can get into this uh, at another time because this is actually solid. The way that he put these uh, precepts together is very edifying. But the point made, the point was made relative to uh, Deuteronomy. So I'm gonna just go ahead and go to. Um, Second Kings of 16, 16 and close it out with that once again. All right. Uh, yeah. Second Kings 16 and six. And this is in the uh, NLT. It says at that at the, at that time, the king of Edom recovered the town of Elah for Edom. He drove out the people of Judah and sent Edomites to live there as they do this day, as they do to this day. Edom. All right. And then when you look there, it doesn't actually mean Edom. It says Aram. OK. As in Latin Vulgate, Hebrew reads resin king of Aram. Again, Aram. Aram. OK. And he, in the KJV, it says Syrian. So why in the NLT does it say Edom? Again, that's the same clerical error that occurred. OK. So, you know, the point was made. Lord's will, this is edifying. All praise, glory, and honor be unto Yahweh. Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Chakwadash. Shalom is the next one.